I will uh, talk a little bit about uh, our center and its activities, which I would say um, represents an application of uh, various elements, aspects of the activity of the Czech uh, Linda uh, Clarin um, part that we've heard about in the other pre presentations today. And um, just to jump right into it, uh, Malach Center for Visual History has been open for public since January 2010. We are serving as an access point for large databases of video interviews and interdisciplinary research support center. The uh, acronym stands for, this is my favorite interpretation, you can uh, find some uh, others deviating a little bit, multilingual access to large spoken archives of cultural heritage, which uh, used to be a project that stood at the very beginning of the idea of centers creation. And technically we are a detached workroom of the Institute of Formal and Applied Linguistics. Um, well, um, on a less institutional and formal note, what does the Center for Visual History actually do is that we are um, providing access and curating and doing research with video interviews, testimonies of the survivors of primarily Holocaust, but also other events of mass violence uh, during the history of the 20th and the 21st century. Um, how I um, tend to present the center itself is that we do not only exist in the digital dimension, but we actually um, overstep into the physical domain as we are a public access working room and infrastructural and research hub that should cater to both the academic and the general public in providing them access to these sources, providing them uh, assistance and expertise of how to work with them and trying to interconnect the worlds that we are uh, somehow a part of. As um, going into more into details in terms of our specific activities, I would like to think about us as a poet at the center of two different vectors, one being the social scientists coming in and trying to use digital technologies within their own research, while we are trying to provide access to the sources for those that are working uh, with them, let's say more in the field of computational linguistics or natural language processing. And we are really trying to cater uh, for this interdisciplinary cooperation and try to uh, provide connections across the network of those different fields. So um, our basic activities are providing research support. Uh, we are, uh, giving access to those who come on location. We are uh, trying to give them some help with the interfaces that um, they work with. They might encounter some problems with them, etc. We also standardly do some services in distance as uh, sampling and search service for researchers or educators. And we are also trying to uh, test some software uh, or tools developed on the basis of the data that we are handling. In terms of um, further public outreach, we are trying to be quite active in education and training. We are organizing seminars and activities for students of different levels, for researchers, methodical seminars for teachers and educators, as well as we're running for the last two years quite successful international internships promoting this interdisciplinary kind of work. And we're trying to, uh, again, uh, bring in uh, students from the fields of social sciences, be it history, sociology, anthropology, other related disciplines to the data that we're working with and introduce them to some technologies and approaches uh, that they might find useful in their own research and work with them further. Um, also, as a public access point, we do not only focus on students and researchers, uh, we also try to provide services to the survivors of the set events and relatives of those who might be interested in um, uh, how those events are represented or try to find the specific sources that they find relevant to their own uh, personal research or lives. And as well, we are providing more broad uh, public events and consultancy lead to media, uh, filmmakers, artists, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In addition to that, we are trying to uh, bring out some own in-house research and publishing. So just 
for a brief visual document, brief digital documentation. This is a picture from my, I believe, the last physically happening uh, seminar for uh, Ukrainian history teachers who are part of a broader uh, trans-European oral history training network. Uh, we are um, organizing an annual uh, visual arts competition for students of different levels working with the set interviews. Uh, some of these works also gained uh, further uh, reflection as they were, for instance, in this picture, as documented, presented at a um, uh, United uh, University of South California Shaw Foundation Institute annual gala in Los Angeles. Um, we participate and help with uh, identifying materials for various documentary movies. This is the last one that has been uh, released last year by the Czech TV. And uh, also we had to adapt somehow to the times of COVID. So we started doing workshops also offsite from the Malach Center as it happened in the town of Vivich in September last year. After the lockdown, we tried to provide online seminars, individual online sessions, showing the researchers how to work with the um, interfaces and the data. And we are trying to support also the distance teaching in its current form by supplying uh, the educators with materials. Also recently we have reached at uh, actually this week's event, an agreement with some of our data providers, how to, uh, under the current situation, give access to larger parts of uh, the collections that we handle to the researchers from the Charles University in an online form. Nevertheless, um, Right now, I could um, move a little bit more towards what actually are those that this, what actually is this data that we're uh, working with. Um, we do believe that the Malak Center for Visual History and the Archives of Handles uh, has um, uh, the quality of having unique technological services and support on site, being free of charge in providing access to these protective archival materials. Here I pointed out uh, the four, uh, let's say, restricted access collections that we provide access to, which is already mentioned by Pavel, the worldwide biggest one, the uh, Visual History Archive, um, the Fortuna Video Archive from uh, the Yale University. We have had access to that since 2018, as well as locally stored smaller collections, which is the so-called Refugee Voices of the Association of Jewish Refugees, and a small subcollection of materials from the Melbourne um, Philip Meisel Testimony Project, which are somehow relevant to uh, Czechoslovak history. What do we actually do in the end of the day with the data, with our, uh, our current projects? We've been working for some while on developing the Malach user interface, uh, which should uh, integrate those big uh, collections with their native uh, user, interfaces as well as data that either hasn't had any kind of treatment in terms of digital curating or a data that used to have some kind of access points, some kind of access technologies that became obsolete, which happens at some time. And um, this is also reflecting one of the major curses of the field of oral history or visual history, which is numerous researchers have been collecting data since basically the end of the Second World War, but a lot of these, um, these resources are forgotten, hidden somewhere in the archives, also within uh, the scope of the last 20 years, a lot of uh, interviews were collected and are stored at some external drives in, um, in the cupboards of those who collected them. So we are trying to reach out to um, both of these zones to bring them things together. So. As I mentioned, the Jewish Holocaust Center in Melbourne and Refugee Voices, they came with no metadata, no uh, descriptive data, no interfaces or interfaces that are actually not working anymore. On one hand, we are trying to make up for that. And on the other hand, we are trying to incorporate all the data sources that we have access to into a um, common framework. The reason for that is twofold. On the one hand, uh, we realized that when someone comes to do the research and look for the data at the Malach Center, it sometimes takes several hours to get used to and learn the basics of each of the native interfaces. We have a huge amount of data spread across various databases, various websites, various search engines, and it really takes um, an effort to get used to them. The second reason is that 
uh, what we call collections, which is sets of data produced by a single initiative or institution, tends to be spread across several different databases. So we are trying to uh, create a tool for easy orientation, tool that contains a simple federated search across those different databases, and a tool, which is this interface, to also give the very simple and understandable guidelines to those who come to the center to work with the sources that they want to actually uh, that we'll to actually work with. Otherwise, with the data that uh, didn't really receive any kind of processing, we are uh, running uh, automated uh, transcriptions uh, in cooperation with be it um, uh, our in-house tools or the Lindat repository provided tools, services, and applications. So this, for example, is um, currently going on pilot study of our geotagging system based on the AJR collection that uh, one of our interns is part of. We are also trying to use uh, the um, uh, name entities recognition uh, tools uh, provided by uh, Lindat to uh, generate some kind of keyword vocabularies that will represent the interviews. And here we are experimenting with some SSNA analysis that uh, is helping us in generate uh, in generating a relevant um, indexing term um, system for them. Why are we doing all this is that we are trying to, let's say, reach a level of our basic benchmark, which is the Visual History Archive, a collection and a database that actually gave the name to the Malak Center itself as just to present briefly uh, its size. Uh, majority of these interviews were collected in the 1990s. They covered different historical periods and currently the archive holds between 55 and 56,000 interviews, if I'm uh, not mistaken, in 10 different topical collections. It contains four different search modules through metadata and indexing terms. As you can see, uh, the 64,000 keywords and phrases that are manually coded uh, contain both uh, the geotext as well as more semantic or named entities uh, based keywords. The whole collection also organizes almost 2 million um, uh, items, large registry of personal names, hundreds of thousands of images, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. However, even with the Visual History Archive, we don't stop at that, as thanks to the collaboration of our institute and the West uh, Bohemian University in Pilsen, we are having at our disposal uh, the uh, automatic speech recognition-based phonetic full-text search tools through larger uh, um, sets of data that is called AMALEF. And I will probably use a minute or two for a little demonstration of how that actually might look in practice. So what I have um, uh, what I have opened here in the other tab that I hopefully will be able to open is the uh, current uh, version of the Malach user interface. So I can uh, basically try my luck and uh, search any kind of uh, general or specific keywords, even some kind of combinations. And uh, here I can reach at individual results of all of the federated databases, whereas I will just quickly look in here. And I'm getting the results for Rock and Brno found simultaneously in the individual interviews in different uh, collections of different databases. But um, maybe to demonstrate a little bit also in uh, following the whole theme of our talk today, if I would like to look for a term that was not actually considered worth to be coded in uh, those large collections by the other providers, I may uh, actually reach the point uh, that there is very little uh, in terms of a coffee house or cavarna to be found in some of the collection, with the exception of the USHMM that presents in three interviews a perfect match in a Czech static Czech transcript. Well, uh, just as a very, um, let's say, out of topic example, I can try to employ the phonetic full text search and see how far I can get. So as you can see here, we have uh, the simple representation of several of the uh, collections that were in, uh, integrated within the system. And uh, by writing coffee house in check here, 
Well, I'm actually surprisingly getting uh, 82 results based on the automated speech recognition uh, procedure that identifies, obviously, the term in different um, uh, shapes and forms as it appears in the interview. And I can go even further and I might try to uh, derive from this subset another subset by looking, for instance, for the dessert that Pavel was presented with. So if I search for Bukhti, out of uh, these 82 interviews, I can find the word Bukhti in 79 files. So um, those are naturally, um, let's say, uh, just a very superficial examples, but what it represents in fact is that through these methods, combining the native interfaces um, and the advanced methods and approaches, uh, the researchers have really powerful tools to uh, use with their own respective uh, intentions and aims. We are participating as the Malak Center in uh, continuous improvement of the system. And uh, I must say that the collaboration with the colleagues who are behind it has been really fruitful. We've been running also some user studies to, let's say, reinforce our own, own impressions and points. And uh, uh, we are uh, continuously, continuously searching for new outlets where to combine the expertise of the different disciplines that meet at the Malak Center for Visual History. So that would be all from me. I hope I didn't use too much time. <laughs> and uh, thank you for your attention.